For 200 years, the Ming Dynasty thrived in a Han ethnic Chinese centered society. The Forbidden City was built, great naval expeditions were conducted, the Great Wall was consolidated. Meanwhile, a new Europe was born from its medieval form, spreading its borders, trade, and religion. In 1511, the Portuguese Empire, locally under the command of the famous navigator Afonso de Albuquerque, colonized Malacca, a tributary state to the Ming court, finalizing the Portuguese monopole on the spice trade. In early 1513, Albuquerque sent men on a mission to establish contact and open trade with China. They arrived in Guangdong province and rapidly acquired a bad reputation among the locals, as they were rumored to be cannibals and child kidnappers. That same year, the King of Portugal ordered his men to establish official diplomatic relations with China. Upon hearing this in 1520, the Zhengde Emperor of the Ming Dynasty approved, and a small embassy was implemented between the two empires. The Ming Emperor however died the year after, leaving no heir. Yang Tinghe, Grand Secretary of the Ming Dynasty, therefore became the de facto leader for 37 days until a successor was found. Yang Tinghe held an isolationist policy and refused trade with Portugal and expelled their embassy. Many Portuguese sailors and officials were imprisoned, many others executed and tortured. Nonetheless, both Chinese and Portuguese sailors were eager to trade with each other. In 1540, several missionaries founded the Society of Jesus, focused on the evangelization of the peoples of conquered territory. Saint Francis Xavier, one of the founders, opened the Jesuit college in Portuguese India in 1542. Four years later, two Chinese boys would enroll in the college. After a trip to Japan in 1549, where Francis Xavier introduced Christianity for the very first time, he came back to India. Accompanied by one of the two Chinese boys baptized Antonio, the Jesuit decided to start evangelizing in China, being the first to do so. He was however unable to start his work, dying on Shangtron Island, a Portuguese trade base on the coast of Guangdong province in 1552. In the 1550s, the Portuguese trade ships successfully chased away piracy from the area. In gratitude, local authorities offered the sailors to stay in Macau. In 1557, the Portuguese established a permanent settlement in the town, which would actually stay Portuguese until 1999. Jesuits started investing in Macau. Alessandro Valignano, the local Jesuit administrator, arrived in 1578. He called for other missionaries in India to join Macau. Michele Ruggieri arrived the year after, followed in 1582 by Matteo Ricci. The Jesuits started to learn the Chinese language and wrote a basic dictionary. Ricci and Ruggieri, both Italian, cooperated and traveled together to the biggest cities of Guangdong province in an attempt to establish another mission, this time on the continent. They were invited to stay in Jiaoqing between 1583 and 1589, where they drew maps and compiled the first ever complete dictionary between Chinese and the European language, in this case Portuguese. Ruggieri studied Taoism and Buddhism to address the common folk, while Ricci studied Confucianism to address the educated class. Ruggieri returned to Europe in 1588, asking the Pope to establish diplomatic relations with the Ming Empire. He was however denied and died shortly after. Expelled by the new governor of Jiaoqing in 1589, Ricci, who had stayed behind, relocated elsewhere and began to travel through China. Meanwhile, Alessandro Valignano founded, in 1584, St. Paul's College in Macau, focused on the study of Chinese and Eastern languages in general. Three years later, he appointed Matteo Ricci as major superior of the mission in China. Under this title, Ricci reached Beijing for the first time in 1598. Due to the ongoing Injin War, where Japan had invaded Korea and China sent help to the Joseon dynasty, any foreigner was unwelcomed as they could be a spy. Ricci had to return south. In Nanjing in the year 1600, the Jesuit missionary met Xu Guangqi, an aspiring scholar, they collaborated to translate classic Western texts to Chinese and Confucian classics to Latin. The year after, Ricci was invited to the court of the Wanli Emperor, being the very first Westerner to enter the Forbidden City. He would build a chapel in Beijing in 1605 that would become the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, oldest Catholic church still standing in Beijing. Now well established in the capital city, under imperial patronage, 
and joined by Diego de Pantoja, another Jesuit. He started converting many people. Due to his efforts, many wealthy people and officials, such as Li Ying Shi, military officer, veteran of the Imjin War, and mathematician, became Catholic. Three years later, Li Qi was approached by a Chinese Jewish scholar from Kaifeng and was surprised to discover there was a Chinese Jewish community. I explain these events and their consequences in my video on Judaism in China. Links in the description below. Xu Guangqi, Matthew's convert from Nanjing, had been baptized in 1603 and started encouraging evangelization locally. His family and descendants would be Catholics too. By 1605, Ricci claimed he had converted about 1,000 people. The Jesuit priest, after a life dedicated to religion, died five years later in 1610, after many conversions. He was supposed to be buried in Macau, like all foreigners, as was dictated by the code of the Ming Dynasty. His colleague Diego de Pantoja, however, made a plea to the court and obtained from the Wanli Emperor that Matteo Ricci would be allowed to rest in Beijing in a Buddhist temple. His grave can still be visited today. From Europe and through Macau, more and more missionaries arrived in China. The Nestorian stele was rediscovered in 1625 by workmen digging in the area. Missionaries took great interest in it as soon as they heard of it. Trouble was however brewing for the Ming Dynasty. In 1618, Nora Hachi, a man who had unified the scattered Jurchen tribes, launched a rebellion against the Ming Dynasty, judging tyrannical the way the Ming administration treated the Jurchen. His army rapidly conquered land, supported by some Ming defectors. A Chinese Catholic convert and protégé of Xu Guangqi, Sun Yuanhua, advocated repelling the Qing by using Western mathematics and military science. He was governor of Penglai and trained his troops to use Portuguese cannons. They however mutinied in 1632 and joined the Jurchen rebels. Sun was subsequently court-martialed and executed. The Jurchen, renamed Manchu, successfully overthrew the Ming Dynasty in 1644, forcing its remnants to withdraw to the south. Thus, the Qing Dynasty was established. The Ming declined rapidly after that. Its last emperor, Yongli, was converted to Christianity by Michał Boim, a Polish Jesuit. Yongli's mother, Empress Dowager Helena Wang, even wrote a letter to the Pope in Rome asking for help against the Qing Dynasty. The Pope answered by promising they would pray for them. In the 1650s, the Emperor sent one of the first Chinese persons to Europe, Andreas Zheng, alongside the Polish missionary. In Rome, they worked together on translating the Nestorian Stele. Xuan Fuzong, a Catholic convert from Nanjing, later went to Europe in the 1680s, visiting Flanders, Italy, France, and even England, meeting the monarchs and heads of state each time. He later officially became a Jesuit priest in Portugal. At the same time, the Jesuits in China introduced Western science to the empire. Johann Adam Charles von Bell, a German priest, worked with Xu Guanqi on a reformed and more accurate calendar. He later became a trusted advisor of the Qing Emperor Shunzhi, allowing him to build many churches, which indirectly led to the conversion of over 500,000 people to Christianity. Bell was joined by the Flemish Jesuit Ferdinand Verbist, also proficient in astronomy and they worked in the Beijing Ancient Observatory alongside many other astronomers. The death of Emperor Shunzhi in 1661 led to a change in the way the country was governed. Since his son was only seven, a regency was put in place that disapproved of the Jesuits. The Muslim Chinese astronomers used the occasion to challenge the Jesuits, accusing them of plotting against the empire in 1664. Bell and Verbist were subsequently imprisoned and prepared for execution. Coincidentally, a series of meteorological events, such as an earthquake and meteor, destroyed part of the prison. The fire also broke out in the imperial palace, where the Jesuits had been condemned. Seeing this as an omen, the authorities released the prisoners, and instead of executing them all, some were simply exiled. Bell died due to the poor conditions he had endured while in prison, but Ferdinand Verbist was able to restore Western reputation. In 1669, he was put to the test against the main figure that had challenged the priests. They had to predict future astronomical events. Using the most recent mathematical discoveries, the beast was able to successfully do so. Thus, the new Kangxi emperor allowed the exiled Jesuits to return, and instead exiled the Muslim astronomer. 
Verbist was also appointed head of the observatory and became close friends with the Kangxi Emperor, who regularly asked him to teach him music and philosophy. Verbist is also credited with having invented the first steam-propelled vehicle as an amusement for the Emperor around 1672. Other religious orders were introduced to China through Macau during the century, such as Dominicans and Franciscans. The papacy favoured these rather than the Jesuits, who gradually declined. A controversy appeared in the Catholic Church. While Jesuits, converted officials, and the Kangxi Emperor himself argued that Confucian traditions were not incompatible with Christianity, the Dominicans argued these pagan rituals were heretic and reported to the Pope. In 1704, Pope Clement XI sent his legate Charles Thomas Maillard de Tournon to excommunicate any Christian practicing Chinese rituals. The Emperor first greeted him, but upon discovering his purpose, he was infuriated and ordered him to be imprisoned in Macau, where he died in 1707. The Jesuits, although disagreeing with the Holy See, still held allegiance to the Pope and had to obey the decrees, which led to a crumble of the missionaries. By 1721, practically all Catholic missions had been cancelled, removed or collapsed. Their work was however not in vain, as a significant proportion of civilians were now Catholics. Resentment towards Christianity started to grow in the court. The Kangxi Emperor started to distrust the Jesuits. After his death in 1722, his son Yongzheng officially banned Christianity in 1724. All priests had to leave. The churches were converted to public offices. Another era of Christianity in China had come to an end. But it would not be the last. Thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it, if so please like it and subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below.